So good afternoon and welcome back to Daily Transfer Update. Apologies, this is late. They will be going back to seven o'clock every morning as of tomorrow. Um, now don't forget we have got a game tomorrow, Arsenal, and that is against Crystal Palace away. Um, our bogey team, we never seem to do really well against Crystal Palace. I will be doing a watch along for that game. I will be joined by Guna Eagle Eye. His link is in the description, so go and subscribe to him. He is my partner in watch alongs and um, we'll be doing that. I will also be doing um, a watch along for the Tottenham against Liverpool game. I'm not sure whether Chig's going to join me yet. I'm still waiting to find out from him. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, 100% I'll be doing it either way. So um, go and subscribe to Guna Eagle Eye. Subscribe to me if you haven't. Um, and check out all my social media accounts in the description. Now, let's start off with Eddie Nketiah. Now, Eddie Nketiah, um, Mikel Arteta spoke in his press conference yesterday about him. He said that um, there's options there. He wants to sit down with Nketiah and, and have a proper chat about it, really, and see where where he thinks he should go and, and whether Arteta himself thinks that he can make him part of his plans. He said he's a talented kid. He said that he um, he thinks he's good enough to play for Arsenal. But obviously, it's down to the player at the same time. Now, we know that Nottingham Forest, Bristol City and the other club whose name I've forgotten, Sheffield Wednesday, there we go, got to in the end, um, have all had talks with him and his agent. Um, but now Aston Villa are linked to him and um, they've lost Wesley. Um, so they want to they wanna replace um, him with Eddie and Nketiah. And listen, I think Eddie's good enough to play Premier League football. Um, just not quite ready for Arsenal. I've said that many, many times. But um, I do think he's definitely ready to play Premier League football. Uh, a team that are a little bit lower down, Aston Villa, they try and play good football. Um, I watched them the other night against Leicester City. Really, really entertaining um, semi-final of the cup competition, the Carabao Cup. And um, they do lack something up front, which is why they're languishing down near the bottom of the table. But it is their first season in the Premier League. I'd be happy if he went to Aston Villa. I think he'd get game time. I think he'd do really well at Villa. And um, it'd be really good for his development, which means he'd come back to Arsenal with loads of Premier League experience. He would have um, he would have played the rest of the season, hopefully. So keep your eyes peeled for that. See what happens in the next coming days. Like I said the other day, I do think by the middle of next week, middle to end, um, I do think that Eddie will be out on loan. Another two that could go out on loan are Emil Smith-Rowe. He is linked with Huddersfield. And... Um, Again, Mikel Arteta spoke about him yesterday. He said that he's got a bright future, etc., etc. Um, he also spoke about Tyrese John Jules as well and said that there's, that's another one that um, we could potentially be loaning out. But as you know, these things change overnight. You never know. John Jules, Smith, Rowan and Ketty all could be in the squad tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, let's move on to Bubakari Saman Mare. Bubakari Samare. Um, I've probably got that name wrong. So if I have, can somebody in the comments let me know how to pronounce it? Um, it's a 20-year-old midfielder from Lille. Um, lots and lots of interest in this guy. Not just from Arsenal, um, but there's about six or seven other teams in for him. Apparently Wolves have bid £30 million for him, which was swiftly rejected. Now, he's a French, um, a French national. He's only 20 as well. He's, a, he's an up-and-coming superstar. There's rave reviews coming out from everywhere about him. I've seen a lot of you guys in the comments section and on my live chats, um, live um, streams, um, mention this guy. Now, I can't say that I've ever seen him play, so I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. Um, but I did have a little look at him. I did have a little look at his profile. I've had a little look at um, some clips of him. And he does look like a very, very good midfielder. I can't lie. Um, the one thing I will say here is that we've seen a lot of players that play over in the French League get built up on a pedestal and then not do it. Um, if you go back to Bakayoko um, at uh, Chelsea, um, he came over from Monaco, massive transfer fee, big rising star, and it's just flopped for him. So I don't want to go down the route of bigging this guy up and saying this and that. Like I said, I don't really know what, what this guy's capable of. I've never watched him in a full game. Um, you guys, like I said, you, you've um, you've said a lot of good things about him. He probably would be good for our midfield from what I've seen. I think he could bring Sank a little bit of steel in midfield. Very good on the ball as well. Um, but I don't want to go down the route of bigging this guy up to be the next best thing in the world. And uh, then he does a Bakioko. Not Bakioko, Bakioko. 
Um, but yeah, listen, let me know in the comment section. You guys that um, that watch that league have seen him play. Um, leave it in there. Tell me what is. Um, what his best attributes are. Tell me why you think he'd be good for Arsenal. Educate me. Give me give me um, something to read. Um, let's move on to Max Ahrens. Now, Max Ahrens is being linked with everyone. Um, Arsenal are still said to be in for him. Arsenal are said to want that replacement at right back um, for Hector Bellerin, um, who could be a player that we let go in the summer. And listen, anyone who's watched these videos or my streams for a long time knows I'm not Hector's biggest fan. I think he's massively overhyped. I think we could probably get about 30-odd million quid for him, which is what it would cost roughly there or thereabouts for Max Ahrens. Um, now, the latest team that are in for Max Ahrens are Borussia Dortmund. Add that to Tottenham, add that to Arsenal, all of a sudden it's a three-way battle for the player. Um, it's not going to be easy to get this deal done, but I still have hope and I would love him at Arsenal. But um, again, leave that in the comments section down below. Let me know whether you take him. Um, let's move on to Jan Kuto. Another player I'd never heard of. But um, he's a young Brazilian boy, nine, uh, 17 years old. Um, this, this smacks of Edu. Edu Gaspar's name's all over this one. Um, he's only a kid. He's a Brazilian under-17 international. And um, he is absolutely rapid. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of him until, um, until I started doing some research for this video. And um, looked at some videos as well. He is lightning. He makes Aubameyang look slow. Um, so yeah, right back, young up and coming. The one thing I'll say about this lad is that when um, when they come to the glitz and the glamour of London, the bright lights, sometimes they melt some of these kids. South American players, they um, they either hit or miss. There's no in-between. Now Martinelli's come over here. He'll have a little bit of company with him if he signs for us. Um, somebody to, to share a room with at hotels on away games and stuff like that. Um, whatever. But... Um, I think that we do need a replacement for Hector. Like I said, I don't rate him. I've, I've not really rated him. That young, fresh, raw Hector Bellerin that burst onto the scene um, years ago now has just gone from being the, the up-and-coming superstar to, oh, well, it's just an injury-prone right-back that's more interested in fashion. Um, so we do need a, a right-back. Him or Max Ahrens, I'd take all day long. Um, I'm actually really impressed with Maitland-Niles. The way Maitland-Niles has played at right back, I'd keep him there for the rest of the season. Um, if we are going to go and buy Max Aarons, then obviously that could change. But um, I'm really impressed with him. I think he's um, I think he's done really well in that position. Um, now let's move on to a centre-back, and that is Samuel Titi. Now, we've been linked with this guy so many times, it is unbelievable. It's almost getting like the Julian Draxler one. Um, but there's a reason we're linked to him again today, and that is because Upper Meccano is in talks with Barcelona. Now, in the summer, cast your mind back, we were in talks with Upper Mancano. We were in talks with um, Umtiti. Umtiti's mates with Lacazette, so he's been spotted at the Emirates a few times, and people have put two and two together and got 105. And um, I don't know how I feel about this, if I'm honest. He's a quality centre-back, Umtiti. Don't get me wrong. Unbelievable centre-back. He's had a couple of big injuries. Would he be coming into the Premier League and sustain bigger injuries. Listen, this league's a lot harder than the Spanish league. I don't mind watching Spanish league football. La Liga's a decent league, um, but it's not as competitive. It's not as hard. You know, it's not as intense. You know, in every single week, a team that are bottom, you've only got to look at Norwich the other week. They get a two all against us. They get a two all against Tottenham. They beat Man City. They're bottom of the table. Can the bottom of the table team in Spain beat Real Madrid, Barca or Atletico? No, they can't. Um, or very, very rarely. It's a real shock if that happens. Norwich have come up from the Championship and got results against some of the better teams already this season. So um, I'm not sure whether Samuel Titi is the answer to our problems defensively. Obviously, we've got William Saliba coming in in the summer. We do need somebody to go next to him. Is that Titi? I don't know. Listen, we could probably get him a lot cheaper than we could have done in the summer. The fee in the summer was around 45, 50 million. Um, I reckon we could probably get him a little bit cheaper than that maybe 40. Um, is it worth 40 million pounds? Leave that in the comment section. I will be back later on today doing my um, combined 11 for Palace against Arsenal and I'll be back doing my preview for the game and my starting 11 later on this evening. So five o'clock and nine o'clock, come check them out, subscribe, uh, stick a like on the video, follow all the social medias. Until then, laters peeps.